We're back with Mike Capuano on the OTR Pop Quiz. Question three, Aeronaut is a popular business in Somerville. What does that company make? And there will be uh, multiple choices on the screen. Bicycles, craft beer, or kites? Uh, well, not kites. I believe it's a beer. It is craft beer, and that makes you three for three. You are, the pressure's on. Now we're going for the Plus you can tell from the one. title, from the name, the way they got the little pull down. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, I was looking at that. I didn't realize what it was. That was very good. All right, here's the final one. We started the quiz talking about hills, so let's finish up with talking about squares. What Davis Square landmark is part of the Hobbs Building, which stood there since 1914? And it's got multiple choice for you. Is it the Somerville Theater? Is it the, the Burn, if I said that correctly? The Burn, the Buren, how do you say it? Burn, Burn, and Red Bones. The Hobbs Building? Who the hell knows what the Hobbs Building is? Well, I have to do. guess the theater. I, I, oh my God, you're four from four. I think you guessed out of three out of the four perfect. from, but they were educated perfect. guesses. No, no, other ones I knew. The Hob, yeah. I just, we never called it Process the Hobbs Building. building. We just called it the Somerville Theater. The Somerville Theater. Yeah, very good. Thank um, you. Let's turn our attention over to Everett. Nevada fined the uh, Wynn organization $20 million for hiding sex, um, Steve Wynn's sexual assaults but it's allowing it to keep its gambling license. Your city is right next to the casino in Everett. Do you think that license should go to one of its competitors at this point? I think the commission should finish its job. I know it's been hung up the last several months because there was a lawsuit out in, uh, right. in, in Nevada that denied them the opportunity to get some information. Uh, again, I, I, I don't know the details. I, I saw the headline the other day. I didn't read the story. Uh, it, to me, it all depends on whether the company knew there was something going on. I mean, you know, misfeasance is not the same thing as malfeasance. If they weren't doing their job, all the directors have been fired and everything else. Well, the, the company Nevada was, regulators say, yes, they well, did know. See, see, this is uh, what they're saying. So in light of that's that. A, that's a problem. That's a real problem. Do you think it should the license should be switched over? Well, again, to a I have to read. I'd have to read the decision to know that. Uh, if, if that's a real serious problem that um, that it will be taken into consideration, and I think rightfully so. If the company was part and parcel of of, um, of hiding and, 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 and ignoring those problems, uh, it needs to be taken into consideration. I want to turn our attention now to the 2020 election. It's already front and center, as you well know. We sent our Ted Reinstein out to talk to voters, to you, about what they think is the most important issue in a candidate that they can believe in or a candidate that can win. Take a look. Here's what he found. Yeah, I want to see that. In advance of the 2020 presidential election, Democrats already have a record-setting large field of potential candidates and a growing internal debate. Should the main priority be advancing new progressive policies like Medicare for All, free college and a Green New Deal? Or should the main priority be simply coming up with the candidate best suited to beat Donald Trump? If politics continues to focus on beating the other person, that's not really the point of representing a country, is it? They're going to want the one to beat Donald Trump. I think anyone will beat Trump, actually. That's what I think. Part of the reason the Republicans ended up with Donald Trump was the fact that they had so many players who were splitting the votes among more moderate Republicans, yeah. more mainstream Republicans, yeah. and you end up with the outlier. You have to meet in the middle, Yeah. Uh, because if you go too far left, you can't be extreme either way. It's okay to get Donald Trump out. I mean, and I think it's going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. But pay attention to what's going on with the country prior to paying attention to the habits of somebody else. I think we should stick to what our values and our virtues are and what's the things that we want to change for the better, not the people we want to put down. So where do you stand? I've always clearly fallen on the side of, uh, for me, in this particular case, I think the most important thing for this country is to remove Donald Trump. Um, and, and that me and any Democrat that's running so far, uh, I agree with in general. I mean, we'll have some differences of opinion here and there, um, but I don't look for perfection on my side. Now, again, if my side somehow decided to nominate David Duke, mm -hmm. that's a whole different story. But the current candidates, the, the ones that are speculated, they're all fine. I mean, there, there are differences, but they're not the kind of differences that Donald Trump has. Whoever we nominate is going to be is going to be my candidate, uh, number one. And number two, I do think that shit has to, again, I'm not interested in perfection. I'm interested in, in improving this country, and the best improvement I can think of is to uh, change who's in the White Some House. Some of those people in, that we just heard from said that he's going to be gone regardless. Do you agree that, with I, that statement? That, that's a lovely statement. I hope they're right, but maybe they should travel outside of Massachusetts and talk to some people from around the country. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a little too paranoid um, in, in the sense, but I... There's a lot of people in this country that don't think the same way we do, um, and, and, and I think that's, um, again, uh, maybe they're right, but I, I would consider that a little too naive. So sometimes I look at that field, though, and Bernie Sanders will be 79 on Election Day. Yep. Joe Biden will be, what, 78 on Election Day. Yep. He hasn't jumped into the water yet, but, but where's the youth? Senator Warren will be 70 on well, Election Day. Where's of, the there's youth? plenty of youth in there, and that's all well and good, but you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not so sh 
Youth is, is one factor, and it is one factor. It's not an in, unimportant factor, but it's only one. Uh, you, I would love to find somebody who is both youthful and experienced, both um, you know, you, you, progressive and moderate. You can't find those uh -huh. people. You're going to have to find somebody of the candidates that are out there, and if somebody doesn't think that there's a perfect candidate, then they should run. Um, but the, I don't wait for the perfect candidate. He waits my criteria and what the proper age should be uh -huh. and the proper gender and the proper philosophical viewpoint. Sure. I look for, okay, there's the field. Of that field, who amongst them is closest, close enough to me and has a good chance of winning and balance that out to the best of my ability. Great, great to see you as always. Thanks nice for coming in. And nice to see you. All right, Steve, yeah, we're going nice back to, to work in the morning. Thank you so for we got to right. get, get ready and get ready to go to work. Great <laughs> to see you. All right, thanks to Mike Capuano. The roundtable is next. Stay with us because Stephen Lynch, a man that Michael knows very well, getting pretty fired up at the Michael Cohen hearing. We'll talk about that straight ahead. He did a great job.